Hello friends, I'm Meghna Thomas and welcome back to our channel Golden Eplets Aviation Pilot Training Academy Your Road to the Cockpit In my video today, I'm going to be discussing with you something very interesting Well, it is not a good thing to happen but it is a very common cause of aircraft accidents and it is called Controlled Flight into Terrains also known as CFIT Controlled flight into terrain occurs when an airworthy aircraft under the complete control of the pilot is inadvertently flown into a terrain, water or an obstacle. The pilots are generally unaware of the danger until it is too late. Most CFIT accidents occur in the approach and landing phase of the flight and are often associated with non-precision approaches. Many CFIT accidents occur because of loss of situational awareness, particularly in the vertical plane, this plane, and many crash sites are on the center line of an approach to an airfield. Lack of familiarity with the approach or misreading of the approach plate are common casual factors, particularly where the approach features step down in altitude from the initial approach fix to the final approach fix. Now, what are the effects of CFIT? Well, it is collision with the ground resulting in hull loss and fatalities or injuries. How can these be avoided? They can be avoided by following the SOPs that are the standard operating procedures, by having terrain avoidance warning systems and situational awareness into relation to terrain. Now, what are the typical scenarios that occur? One is a pilot-induced situation. The pilot encountered weather conditions that were worse than forecast and in an attempt to maintain or regain visual contact with the ground in an area of very low cloud descended below the minimum safe altitude and the aircraft struck the ground. Contributing to this accident was the pilot's over-reliance on GPS while attempting to maintain VMC conditions and a resultant lack of adequate situational awareness of terrain. Next is the ADCO-induced situations. The controller gave the aircraft which was still at 210 knots an intermediate heading towards the ILS centerline during a radar vectored initial approach but was subsequently distracted and failed to issue the intercept heading for the ILS localizer. When the flight crew who were unfamiliar with the approach failed to notice the situation in time to query it, the aircraft flew beyond the centerline and into high terrain on the other side before resolution was possible. Now, what are the factors that can contribute to CFIT? Number one, weather. Rain, turbulence and icing may increase the workload of the pilot and can cause interference reducing the accuracy of radio navigation beacons. Poor visibility, particularly at night, can contribute to disorientation and loss of situational awareness. Approach design and documentation. The depiction of an approach and particularly step-down fixes on terminal approach procedure plates may not be clear. Approaches may take aircraft close to high terrain in order to comply with the diplomatic or noise abatement constraints or to de-conflict with departure routes. Next is failure to use the standard phraseology leading to confusion and misunderstanding. The main important reason could be a pilot fatigue and disorientation. Approach and landing are the most demanding phase of flight. The pilot must be thoroughly prepared and aware at all times during these phases. So now you know what a controlled flight into terrain means and how does it happen. I hope you find our videos interesting and keep following our channel for more such informative videos and updates. 